welcome to Team G503. I'm Scott Schiller, your host. As you know, we've been really progressing along with the 1943 Willis MB. I'm gonna kind of change it up here. I hope you're enjoying the electrical series and the wiring series we're doing piece by piece. I wanna do a couple of the gauges. I wanted to install them and a couple more components that we need to have in there so we can route our wiring around them. So let's just jump in it and let's do the oil pressure gauge. In this video, I'm going to be installing the oil pressure gauge in its proper location on the dash. As many of you have seen the videos here, I had a chassis platform that I'd set up where I actually had all the gauges set up. But the line is going to go right down here in the front of the firewall and it's going to get installed in that fourth grommet hole that I'm showing you there. We've still got our firewall pad installed, so I'll show you how to get through that easily as well. The most difficult part of this is going to be getting this apart without spilling oil all over the place. Although there's no pressure currently onto the gauge, there could be some oil there in the line, so I've put a rag over the manifold here just in case I spill any, drop any oil on it or any of the parts. I don't want to lose any of them. Also, if you were replacing this gauge on your G503, you'd follow the same process. First, I'm going to remove the bracket here, and then I want to get at this fitting that actually connects to the gauge itself and the metal line here. This is where I'm worried about. There might be a little bit of oil come out of there, but we'll see and figure it out. I'm using a flare wrench here to loosen that brass fitting that's attached to the back side of the gauge. It makes it a little easier to get in between the two studs there that mount the gauge itself. And also, this is kind of difficult to get at with a regular wrench, so you're going to want to go ahead and hold that oil gauge and just loosen that fitting up, and then you should be able to spin that off with your hand. The last twist on that when you install is what actually seals the brass to the back of the gauge. So we'll just go ahead and spin this off, and lucky me, there's no oil on there, so that's fantastic, and this gauge was working perfectly when I had on my little sled component that I used to drive the chassis. The oil pressure gauge is part number A8190 and then we'll just slide our bracket back here off our metal tube and take it over the fitting here. If you were doing this under the dash it probably would be a little bit more difficult but it makes it really easy to see here that I've just got this strung up here inside the engine. Okay now we're going to go to the fourth hole or grommet that's over from the driver's side and I'm just going to use a punch to punch through that firewall pad that I put in there. It'll make it really easy to feed the metal tube back through and we won't get any debris inside of it. Back earlier in this series when we installed these grommets, I showed you how they had a little split or a slit in them. So what we'll need to do here now is we get it to be able to get the brass fitting inside is we're going to have to go ahead and remove that grommet for the time being. I'm just going to use my hand here and pull it out loose and that way I can get the fitting inside and then I can make it tight when I put the new one back in. You have to be a little patient, a little careful with these grommets when you're taking them back out. Even though these are new, I still don't want to just pull it out of there and tear it. But once you've got it out, then we're going to take our metal line, and I'm going to show you here how that slit's going to help you out when you're reinstalling this hose. So you'll just slip that grommet right through that slit over the top of the oil line itself. And here's where it's going to get a little tricky now. We're going to have to pull back on this hose, and then we're going to feed that line right through that hole and that firewall pad. And be careful now at the bottom now, because I'll show you the position of where this hose goes to the engine in just a second here. But I want to show you how to slip this through first, and then I can show you at the bottom how it should look when you're finished. We'll just feed that hose in right there to the very top or first bend in it, and then we'll go back and we can work our grommet back in. I'm not going to waste time in the video showing you. It does take a minute to put that back in, but it is possible you should be a little bit nimble with your fingers. Okay, now we'll go in here, and this is the position of where the oil pressure gauge is going to go, and lucky me, my metal line came right out close to where that is, so all I have to do now is lift it up over this bracket right here, and I'll line it up with the hole in the opening on the dashboard. The next step is going to be to install the bracket back onto the metal line. Nothing worse than installing your oil gauge and then realizing that your bracket's not in place and there is no way to get that on there if you've already installed the gauge. So we'll pull this line back and I'll see if I can't do this with one hand so I don't have to put the camera down. And we're just going to slip that in with the ears or the tongues of those brackets facing forward towards the inside of the dash as I'm showing you right here. Next, let's take a look at our gauge, and we've got our gauge, and I want to show you this little dimple that's on the bottom of the casing, and that little dimple right there is going to go into that slot that's on the dashboard to keep the oil gauge in place when we connect it up. So when we install that first, we're going to make sure that that is straight up and down, and that'll keep us in the right position. I'm going to go ahead here and line up the fitting, and then I'm going to take by hand and I'm going to start the brass fitting. Now, I'm going to tighten this on the outside of the dash. It can be done inside. It's just for me, it's a little bit easier to film this and show you how this gets tightened. But you could actually install this gauge into the dash and then use that little stud there to hold your gauge in place while you tighten the nut. It'll just be easier for me to show you here on the outside, and I'm pretty close to the position I need to be in. Again, I'm going to use my flared wrench here just so we don't strip that brass fitting around the edges, and it's also easier to get in between those two studs. And that last little bit there that you tighten your hand, it's really not that much. You just give it a good snugging, and that'll keep any leaks from happening. 
Okay, I've repositioned myself here. I'm showing you how that little nipple or that little indent there that is on the outside of that casing goes right into the dash. And now we're inside here. We're going to slip our bracket back over those two studs. And then we can reinstall the lock washer and the small nut there with a 3 8 inch wrench. And I'm reaching inside here. I've got it all lit up now so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'd like to get some of these gauges in before I continue on with the wiring in the series that we've been doing. Just because I want to have these in and I can route the wires around them. So we'll take a look on the outside here, all tightened up and everything's secure, and we can look inside the dash here and see how that metal line goes from the gauge through the firewall pad and through the firewall. We've got a couple more things to do on the outside here. I've put the grommet back in. As you see, I've got that slit facing downward, and notice that piece of cloth loom right there. It's going to have a clip installed right over the wire loom. We'll use a 1024 by 3 quarter inch screw with a lock washer nut, and that hole is right below to the left of the oil can holder I'll show you right here. I want to show you this all installed, the clips all fastened up, and I want to show you how the lower hose should be fashioned in order not to interfere with the clutch pedal travel. We're all finished up, on to the next component. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button down there. And thank you so much for all the subscribers we've been getting lately. It's grown in leaps and bounds, and I really appreciate your support in watching the videos. Also, you can also click that bell at the bottom there, and that will give you a notification when we release new videos. They're going to start coming a little bit quicker and faster now. I've been wrenching on this and putting it together because I'm excited about it more than I've been editing the videos. So now I'm going to dive in and edit a bunch of the videos before I actually get finished. But I'm getting awful close. All right, my friends, until next time, keep it safe and happy G.